So in this video we're going to be looking at Unit 2, Topic 5, which is all about financial planning. As part of it we're going to be looking through purposes of financial planning, the planning process itself, features of effective financial planning, financial planning tools and also using financial products to meet our financial goals. So, why would we need to financially plan? We need to plan for things such as life events, going to university, buying a car or a house, or even starting a family. We may also wish to plan for our retirement so we can enjoy a comfortable and leisurely life during our old age. Of course, we may also wish to plan for our death. We have to cover things like funeral expenses, but also we may wish to pass something along to the next generation. So the planning process then. There are seven stages, the first one being decide on the aspirations you really want to achieve. Based upon this, we can establish realistic timescales, and then we can establish where we are right now, our starting position. Once we know our starting position, we can establish our priorities, what is the first, second, third, etc. thing we want to achieve. Then we can put the plan into a document. We can actually write it down, put the plan to paper. Once we've put it to paper, we can start implementing. And then we've implemented, we can review the progress. Is there any remedial action that needs to be put in place, for example? And then the loop starts again. So what features are there of effective financial planning? Well, the things that make effective financial planning are that they must be realistic, they must be clear, they must be timely and flexible, and also actually documenting it, putting it onto paper, is an important stage. So what tools have we got in order to effectively financially plan? First of all, working out a budget, and second, a cash flow forecast. These are the things that can help us meet our needs, wants and aspirations. I've done a video on this and I'll leave the link in the description. However, when we're talking about budgets and cash flow forecasts, we should these should be subject to periodical monitoring and control to check the progress and assess whether remedial action needs to be put into place. So, what sort of financial products can we use in order to meet our financial goals? I've done a video already on savings, borrowing and insurance products and I'll leave the link in the description. But just to recap, the products, the savings products that we may wish to use in order to meet our financial goals are things like fixed term savings accounts. We may also wish to invest in premium bonds. A borrowing products, we may wish to take out a mortgage, a PCP, or higher purchase in order to meet our financial goals. When it comes to insurance products, there are a number of different insurance types we may wish to take out, including life insurance. So, to test our knowledge then, three multiple choice questions. The first one, the table below shows a family's budget. Calculate the disposable income for that family. They have main income of £1,406, additional income of £197, whereas they have total expenses of £1,258. So, you may wish to pause the video in order to calculate the answer to this. The answer could be minus 345 plus 345 plus 2,467 or plus 2,861 pounds. The answer to question one is B. The main income plus the additional income minus the expenses equals 345 pounds of disposable income. Question number two. Which of the following financial products is the most appropriate for someone to use as rainy day money? Is it an authorised overdraft, an instant access savings account, notice savings account, or a personal loan? So what is the most appropriate for someone to use as a rainy day money? The answer is B. An instant access savings account is a pot of money there if you need it. 
The alternatives, if we look at C and notice savings account, we need to give notice to the um, to the provider, and therefore it would not be suitable if we needed it instantly for rainy day money. Question number three. The difference between someone's total assets and their total liabilities is described as their A, gross value, B, gross worth, C, net value, or D, net worth. The answer is, of course, D. The difference between total assets and total liabilities is known as someone's net worth.